Flags. We've all seen them. I like banners because they remind me that at its core, Warhammer is a fundamentally very stupid game. This game's just about goofy guys. Everyone, including myself, takes it too seriously. It's just about goofy guys. That's it. Don't worry about any other component. I assume that the majority of the current design team has dementia. It doesn't matter. It's just about goofy guys. Goofy guys and their goofy little flags. God bless the flags. They should have stopped making rules the first day somebody built the spreadsheet. None of this infrastructure was ever meant to scale to the age of information. This was never meant to be an activity of a multi-page FAQ on the etiquette of chess clocks and multiple fractalized organizations of different documents and the best way to use a said clock. This was a game where you were supposed to make watercolor flags of the dumbest looking face you've ever seen in your life on canvas paper and glue them to the back of a little man made of lead with an even dumber looking face. The line of sight is cancelled, we're only modeling for disadvantage from here on. I feel like a huge component of aging is forgetting all the skill sets that you've acquired in life and then slowly rediscovering that you have them. It feels like like being a toddler sometimes. And as novel as the experience of remembering you spent over $100,000 in art school is while in the process of drawing the evil sun's flag, for anyone who didn't do that, banners are still for you. They're for everybody, and that's why they're good. If you'd like to make a banner of your own, here's some advice. So if you're not familiar, this is how all banners used to look in Warhammer. There were stickers that would come with boxes, you'd peel them, you'd put them on banner poles, and then they and the banner poles would break uh, immediately. I cover all my banners in Mod Podge, which helped here too. Uh, if you cover them in Mod Podge, it works partially as a varnish and also just like as an adhesive to protect it and like coat it. More so than just like a spray can would. Uh, it's like physically encasing it in a little bit of glue basically. And it's thin and it's hard to see, which is good. And it'll keep your banner a little bit safer. And and I use brass rods instead of the old lead rods and pewter ones, which used to break all the time. For this kind of banner, I usually start off by making a pencil sketch. Once the whole thing's run in pencil, I go over it, typically section by section with the watercolor, like coloring in one thing completely and then moving on to the next one. This is an approach that helps me, but you can kind of do whatever you want. There's no like right way to do it. One thing that I feel like is really important to do though is to go pretty light with it. Like I like applying the lightest tone over the majority of the surface area that I want to paint outside of like the extreme highlights and then work Working our way slowly making it darker and darker because once you make something dark it's pretty hard to bring it back up to the original like white color. Uh, I know doing a banner this way might look intimidating. I feel like for people who paint a lot of models it might actually be easier than you think. Uh, there's a lot of templates for banners that you can just fill in and color too without having to draw something yourself. This site is awesome. It's the best resource I've found. These are from Lead Mountain Widow which is a WordPress I don't actually know anything about but they have great banners on there. If you open most of them as images and a new tab, they'll have like high res versions, which are pretty easy to print. There's also a ton of great reference and like old hammer art. And if you didn't know already, a lot of codexes have pages like this in the back that are, like super old, like I'm talking like second edition and rogue trader codexes mostly that you're supposed to either scan or photocopy yourself. When you print banners, I would recommend using cardstock instead of normal computer paper. The normal computer paper will work fine for like acrylic stuff, but it's not going to be as durable and watercolors won't work very well on it. Here's a printout of some very old blank banners. This one I printed first and and then flip the original document and then put it back in the printer and print it again so that it's the same exact design on both sides. If you don't want to color the banners by hand yourself, a lot of the ones that come colored look pretty good when you just print them on the cardstock as is. To save time on flags that I wanted multiple of and like it to be exactly the same, I print a lot of them colored and I just like how they're shaded here. Here's some banners I designed myself in Photoshop. I'm gonna put a link to all of these on my Patreon for free. So even if you don't remember, you can download them. Like on this track, for instance, I didn't want to have to do the checker flags over and over again and I was running out of time. I was trying to finish this before an event so I just ended up printing these and gluing them on in the end. Don't pressure yourself into freehanding these if it's not fun. You, who cares about the clout? It doesn't matter. You don't like to flex on anyone. Banners aren't about clout. They're about having a good time. This is a war boss that I modeled after a character from Nate Crowley's Gasgol Thraka novel. It's so good. It's my favorite Black Library novel by far. I would highly recommend the audiobook version. It's very well acted. Yeah, this is the character Biter though from that book who I made for a narrative camp Campaign, I wanted to give him like his own personal blood X banner. This banner was again designed by me in Photoshop and then I printed it and then painted over it with my airbrush and some like weathering powders and stuff. It's a technique I use a lot. These are some that I made in 9th edition. I made them as objective markers for more narrative games where I don't want just like a big pancake. After printing them, I weathered them with a lot of dark brown washes in order to make them stand out from each other. It adds a lot. I highly recommend painting a little bit on your banners even if you just print them. It'll make them blend in with the model more. And because I printed these, 
I can make a ton of them. I can scale them to different sizes. I can print them in different colors and I can use them on different models like this more recent fella here. Using the same banner on different units throughout your army will make them feel more cohesive and like they're a unified force. It's cute. Your models are going to love it. The Evil Sun's banner in the front was just done with normal GW acrylics. That also works fine if you don't want to get watercolors. Or for models like this looted Raider here that just come with sails, you can paint straight on them. If it's your first time, I recommend doing something simple like a symbol or anything with a really clear silhouette. Here's one of the first banners that I did when I got back into 40k in like 2017 or so after a long hiatus. I wanted to give my orcs like a co- oh no he fell down. Like a cohesive reoccurring symbol that the whole army has. The model on the right has been repainted probably like six times since I was 11. The walk banner on the left was my first time using a brass rod to make a banner. I wanted him to be stupid tall. My squig off has a couple banners hanging off the side. These were done entirely with GW paints too but I was basically trying to use them as watercolor paints where the paint was just like super thin most of the time. This is a Dwarf Thunder I made when I was 12. The design was photocopied from an old Dwarf Army book. I'm pretty sure it's colored in with Crayola marker. Oh the Crayola branding is really good inspiration. I feel like this is how Warhammer should feel or at least this is how I want it to feel right now. I want painting Warhammer to feel like a box of Crayolas. However if you don't want Warhammer to feel like a box of Crayolas here's an example of a more like grimdark banner. I made this for one of my Chaos Knights. It's actually primarily just like decals layered on top of each other. I think the star itself is freehand and the letters were done with like a fine tip black marker. In 8th edition I built this army that I used the rules for Depus Custodes for but I converted all of them to be orcs. I used to use this guy as a Vixilis Praetor. I think this might be the last remaining model that GW still sells that comes with a banner. This is a Joseph Bugman that I got in Warhammer World. I think you can only buy them there from like Bugman's Tavern. As you might have noticed I've been stalling for a while just showing banners I have because I thought I was out of advice but another thing I do a lot is set fire to the banners when they're done. I'll usually cut out a jagged pattern kind of like this. Then I just singe the edges a little bit with a lighter and then once it's a shape I like I blow it out. I do this step before I apply any Mod Podge or varnish or anything. You might be able to do it after but oh it's the idea of burning that stuff seems kind of sus. I also cut out little holes of an exacto knife to represent bullets that have gone through during a battle. Banners encourage the playful side of Warhammer. I think they make them also feel more like toys to me. Like nice toys. Friendly toys. All the old hammer stuff is sort of like super vibrant colors obviously and I feel like bring some of those sensibilities just to the banners in your army can help a more modern modest and color scheme and saturation force have some of the like quirky flair that old models have. I'm definitely in my goofy arc right now so if anyone wants to see more goofy old hammer leaning or uh, lighthearted warhammer content please consider giving the channel a subscription or a patreon membership. Tournaments just don't really feel like the move right now so I think focusing on hobby stuff is a good direction. To quickly recap some of the steps from the beginning though I use brass rods to make all my banner poles. They're sturdier than pewter. I think most of mine are around one millimeter in thickness or 1.25. I like those sizes a lot. Cardstock works much better than normal computer paper if you're going to print your banners. When you're done with your banner absolutely cover it in Mod Podge otherwise it'll probably get damaged and fall apart over time. And finally don't feel pressured to do like a freehand banner or anything that fancy if you don't want to. I feel like the idea of having the freehand something discourages some people or it feels like too intimidating so yeah just have fun with it. If you're watching this video the week it comes out I'm gonna be playing a game with the boys from Tabletop Titans this Saturday at 12 Pacific Standard Time. That's gonna be on their channel I'll make a post about it later too. And uh yeah as always thanks for coming by. There's a lot of new hobby stuff on the horizon I've already got planned out and there's one video in particular that I'm very excited to share but I don't want to spoil it yet. So uh yeah take care see you soon.